As a real estate person, this is a real big advantage of traveling. I'm in Melbourne right now, and what I'm in is in the CBD, the Central Business District. And right off the top, I'm getting really good ideas because they, this is a more compact area versus a lot of our uh, properties which are in more suburban locations. And the way they have managed their design, the way they have designed the walkways, the way they have managed foot traffic is really interesting. People bemoan the lack of culture in America, and I'm in Melbourne right now, and there is a lineup outside the Disney store, which is basically the pinnacle of American culture. So the next time around you hear somebody say, oh, America doesn't have any culture, just remember, they're probably wearing jeans, they listen to rock and roll or hip hop, they drive in an American car, and they get to their office, and they have probably work in Microsoft, Excel or Word, or Mac. This is why America's number one, baby. You don't even realize it. And they are in all aspects of your life. From time immemorial, humans have gotten together to celebrate, and there's no better example of this than sports. I'm at the Cricket World Cup in one of my favorite cities in the world, Melbourne, and right behind me is the Melbourne Cricket Ground. This is hands down the best stadium I've ever gone to. It doesn't matter what sport you're playing. And the great thing about the stadium is that it was designed with a purpose. And the purpose is to have at least 90 to 92,000 people congregate in an orderly fashion, witness uh, basically like history making sporting events and then leave, but celebrate all along the way. And when you do things with a purpose, magic happens. It's the exact same way as when we take un unloved, underused, underdeveloped properties, we put in our magic sauce, and we push up rents and we make a ton of money. Because when you do things with an intention, when you do things with purpose, great things can happen. In my experience, great companies are a lot like great cities. They each have their own distinct character. We're in the Chinatown here in Melbourne. And the first thing you see is that this is a distinct part of the city. It has its own character and feel. And as soon as you step out of here, you go into the main thoroughfare of the CBD, the look and feel completely changes because they have captured a very niche crowd. And the reason for this is because this Chinatown, like a lot of successful other Chinatowns, knows its audience. It understands what its audience wants and it understands how to present it to them. So they double down on their strengths, similar to what great companies should be doing. They don't play into their weak, they don't play to their weakness. So they don't try to have a fast food restaurant here. They don't try to do, you know, buy the number of food. It's a very, very, very distinct and niche product that's offered to the customer that wants a distinct and niche product and they don't pretend to be anything else. Very similar to great companies. What I'm going to show you is a great example of real estate in a centrally located area as you can see over here, right? And there's a couple of apartment buildings right there. They're very cookie cutter and bam, you see the Brady. This is wellness design, central location, meeting top of the market sales price, we checked, and presumably top of the market rents as well, which is similar to what we're doing as a design philosophy at the Blue on Lorraine in Rolling Green. We've got a great century located product, which is Blue on Lorraine and Rolling Green. We've got a wellness design, which is very different from all the other properties around it, and that leads to getting top of the market rents and pricing. So this is where design, Good living, central location, and economics all comes into play. And if you nail a concept like they've done at Brady and we've done at Blue on Lorraine, man, it's a match made in heaven. We're in a recession, and especially in times like these, people are always looking for the best strategy. Whenever I have questions, I reach out to my network and get great responses, triangulate those responses to figure out what's the best response that fits my needs. And when I ask this question, but what's the best strategy in a recession, I get one consistent reply from the pros. And that reply is create a plan and diligently follow through. So if your plan is to invest more in our real estate syndications, I would suggest you diligently follow through on it because Wherever there is turbulence, wherever there's a recession, sophisticated investors start licking their chops because they know there's so many opportunities available. 
So just remember, make a plan and follow through on it because a mediocre plan perfectly executed is better than a perfect plan not executed at all.